Calling all nerds. This is More Than Dice, the podcast where we dive deep into the realms of everything nerdy. Whether you're a nerd culture connoisseur, a tabletop titan, a miniature gaming marveler, or just someone who proudly embraces their inner geek, this is the podcast for you. And now here's your hosts, Gonzo, John, and Nerd. Oh, and uh, sometimes Mizzy. Welcome to another episode of More Than Dice. I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm Nerd. And welcome to episode 290. Holy fuck, we've been podcasting a long time. Mm-hmm. It's almost 300. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, theming your army or your models or units, depending on how you want to go with it. Uh, we're going to hit all those aspects. But before we do, we have to talk about all the business, as it so says. Uh, we want to thank Midnight Heroes for sponsoring us and providing some really cool models for us to see. Uh, I think Nerd is probably going to be painting up a pirate that was a special edition Midnight model, uh, Midnight Heroes model that was also a Warfare Weekend model. Um, and she'll be painting up that. Yeah, there we go. Oh, you broke the hey. head. It came like that. <laughs> I thought it was on purpose. No. But you also have the small mini version, too, so. Yes. That one came just fine. Yeah. Uh, we also have, I want to thank Turbo Dork. Make sure you check them out in their new paint line. How they got coming with the new bottles and uh, the silicone mixing sticks. I didn't know that they had those, but they are bringing those out. Uh, I talked to them just a little bit. They said they might have the new paints and might not have the new paints at Adepticon. But uh, they said that they're selling like fire right now, the new bottles. The pre-orders sure are going are. like crazy, he said. Uh, so we'll see. I'm sure they'll have it. Uh, and that is the last meow for the night. I am on ears all evening. Uh, thanks, Xander. Uh, one of the Parabellum War Games, makers of Conquest. Um, they've got some really cool stuff going on. A lot of new models. Uh, they're going through a slight, I want to say edition change, but the yearly, you know, changes to the system. So... Uh, check them out. They'll be at Depticon, definitely. And um, I know they're running some events. But also go check out their booth because you can demo their games uh, like crazy. And they're a great bunch of friendly people. They're always really sweet uh, to hang out with um, type thing. Uh, we want to thank Creature Caster. Not only do they make awesome miniatures that are just used for whatever game you want, they're also the makers of the Judgment models. If you haven't checked out Judgment, you should check it out and have a good time playing it. Um, and they also have a tribes account on my mini factory where you can get roughly 10 to 12 models and usually a supersized model than a, and also a fifth edition, uh, module to go with it. So it'd be kind of neat if you play fifth edition D and D, you can have the models to go with it. Uh, they just finished their big story arc, uh, in January from last year. So er, all their models, everything comes into a big story arc every year, which is cool. Uh, we want to thank Muse on Minis for hosting our channel. Um, we will have some news on a new podcast that will be uh, we'll be sharing and hosting, uh, which is uh, not going to be based on any game particular. I know we have a lot of War Machine podcasts, which is good, no problem. I don't care. All these people are. They got to live somewhere. Might as well be with us. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this one is not game. It is not game centric, but it is about nerdy stuff like usual. Um, and when we can make the announcement, we'll let you know. Uh, we'll be hosting their files and putting them up on the channel, too. Um, I think that's it. I think I got everybody. I don't think I need to talk about anybody else. We're done. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, guys, we are doing a little bit of changes to the podcast, uh, and not really the podcast in particular, just the entire plethora of us. Uh, the podcast is still going to do the same thing. We'll still do a pre-ramble, still do, you know, our subject, talk about things and, you know, our media section. That's not changing. Still going to be Sundays. Um, but, uh, we are still debating about how to do a web page, uh, so we can get a little bit more information out to y'all. Um, Working on that, um, but also myself and Nerd are going to do some more streaming. 
um, mostly painting streaming. Uh, John is still debating whether he wants to do some uh, gaming streaming, but, you know, that'll come in due time. He's got to figure out what he wants and have life work in his favor. <laughs> yep, I'll be on Monday nights at 7 Central. And I will be on Wednesday night, 7 Central. Um, and we'll be painting up miniatures. And some miniatures will be cool stuff that's been gifted to us. And so you'll get to see some new stuff or some stuff coming out. Um, so it'll be different. You'll have to figure out what we're going to be painting when we do it. Um, other than that, that's like that's like the only changes. Like I says, no, no bad changes, just cooler stuff. Well, Art of Michael, if you decide to start streaming again, let us know. Uh, if not, you can come out and hang with us and get you motivated to do whatever. I'm mostly doing it because I'm a lazy bastard and it's hard for me to paint. I mean, I painting up until recently when I cut my thumb. <laughs> What'd you do? I mean, just grab the knife the wrong way. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it'll, it'll be fine tomorrow. I could probably have painted today, but just want to go a little more. Just we tried the first night. It was bleeding still. I had to wipe the blood off my paintbrush. So I did, should not continue at that point. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a wise decision. Yeah, so instead of a couple nights of action figures because I got plenty of action figures to open. Oh, no. You don't realize how much you use just that spot of your thumb until you cut it, and you're like, holy crap, everything I do it makes that annoying. Yep. Mm-hmm. But, like I said, we have some changes. Right. Nothing bad, nothing harsh, nothing, you know, just providing a little bit more media for you to consume type thing. Plus, we yeah. like to paint. I may do some video gaming streaming, too, because I'm playing... Final Fantasy 14, so I may, you know, do some of that and whatever, but we'll wait and see. Uh, John, do we have any shout outs this week? Uh, not that I recall, but I'll be honest, this week was a bit of a blur because of. I haven't heard work, anything. So. I didn't hear anything either, so it was just kind of interesting. I, was just, I didn't think so, but you usually know more than we do most of the time. Um, it's probably because I troll social media a little more than you guys do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember of us having any shout-outs we need to do. I'm just going to take a quick look and see. Oh, uh, Nerd, I think you're good. You can take off your floof now and uh, have someone else pay oh. for it again. Thanks, Busy. My hair is all sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, oh, that John O'Spencer oh, decided thanks, to make John. it. <laughs> you're welcome. I needed to cover up your hair again. I was standing up, so now you have to cover it back <laughs> up again. Solidarity, yo. That's my uh, story I'm sticking with. I mean, mine's going to get weird because I'm growing my hair out because I've got a friend's wedding in April, and I'm going to dye my hair for it because she's that kind, and I think I'd be cool. Awesome. Ooh, what color? Blue. Probably blue. It should give everyone work a fucking fit, too, so uh, <laughs> it's a bonus. It's fuck them right now. Not even respectfully fuck them, just fuck them in general. Um, <laughs> so we didn't have any shout outs. So let's get to the most important part of the podcast of all time. Uh, when I show off stuff Gonzo sent me? Oh, you want to show off stuff? Uh, oh, we, you don't want to talk about drinks first? No. Okay, you want to show off? Okay, what are you going to show off first? <laughs> okay, well, this is this is the, the extra one. He got me a nice lightsaber handle here. It was very cool. Dark, the dark very saber? Dark saber, yeah. I like the, like yeah. the style of it. I like that it's got a hole here, so you could make something to fit in there. Foam probably work pretty well. Be mm -hmm. super light, probably work. So that is super cool. And he painted it even, which is extra bonus special. And then uh, I don't know where he got the scale for this, <laughs> but uh, that looks like something straight out of Overwatch. It, it's a, it it's is, a Halo Magnum. Yes. So I know Spartans are like seven foot tall, but their weapons would not be quite this big. Supposedly, from what I was researching, when I found the file, they says this is full replica to if it was a Spartan-sized weapon. And I'm like, if it was it, cosplay, no. I wouldn't I mean, shrink it down for cosplay, but... It's cool, but but it's I, I think whoever did that does not understand how scales work. <laughs> Theoretically, the reason why it's like this with the giant trigger and the handguard is because they have a giant armored hand in here. And you can see how they need that much space. Yeah. You know, hand a little bit bigger, and then armor. So yeah, yeah, but pretty cool. 
Again, he painted it again, also. Which is cool. I didn't weather it or Thank anything. You, I just got it painted up. Well, no, that's fine. You don't have to weather it. Because that's something you should do, like, on a personal basis, honestly. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't know what kind of weathering you do. You could have your armor in, like, this reddish rushed, you know, reddish dirt ma thing, and then you need to make sure the gun matches. But yeah. there you go. That's what Gonzo sent me this week. Yeah. Nerd got a bunch of stuff, but she's going to show it out on her paint time because it's a ton of models to paint. And then she's got another package from next week that I got to send her to. So more shit. Presents. More nerd shit. Um, so, all right, John, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, I have a code fireball. Code fireball. Nerd. Uh, a simply spiked watermelon lemonade. Okay. Uh, I'm doing some good old uh, H2O because um, I had a lot of salt and bad food today, and I need some extra water. I know I'm going to be kind of bloated from eating all the salt because I went to the movie theater and ate popcorn. And we all know that that's like not really good for you, but is really, really oh, salty. So good, though. <laughs> I don't know. It gets stuck in your teeth. I feel like that stuff at the, at the movie theater gets stuck in your teeth more than the stuff you get at home. Yeah, it could be. But I, 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 I went to the movie, te movie theater for the first time since before COVID. And so I was like, hmm, going to have to do this. And so I'll give a review of the movie I saw and uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, spoiler free edition, of course, since it's still in the theaters. But it was you'll get to find out. Uh, I'll have to tell John off air so I don't spoil it for anybody. The after credit scene, so he can hear about it because they'll find it interesting. Type thing. So, because I, I I can't say anything spoiler related because nerd doesn't want spoilers on it. But John doesn't give a shit most of the time. Yeah, not really. No. <laughs> Honestly, the way things go, half the time I forget, and then it shows up like, oh, I remember Gonzo told me about that. <laughs> So, guys, we appreciate you listening. We appreciate you watching. Um, we hope you enjoy everything that we do and everything that's coming out. Um, make sure you check us out on Mondays and Wednesday nights now. Uh, we're going to do some painting and talking um, and everything. Um, as always, please take care of each other. Please look after each other. If you hear something, say something. If you see something, say something. And if you can do something, do something. If you can't, find somebody that will because if you don't, it's going to keep on happening. Cheers. 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 Man, this is so amazing. And so, I apologize to everyone who listens to us in the audio <laughs> form. That's got to be fucking obnoxious. <laughs> Now, now I just feel like fizzing from, from Dark Earth. <laughs> which I had that RPG too, by the way, which is actually a really good RPG. It has a really cool RPG system. I would have to rewatch it because I actively avoided it as a child because Skeksis scared the shit out of me. Oh, they should. All right, let's switch kinda over like the the Kind of like the fireies in uh, Labyrinth. Yeah, but they like took their heads off and shit. Yeah, that's why I didn't like them. <laughs> they were quite amazing. You, you could just put kick their heads and suddenly you're like, jobs are good. Yeah, I mean, now I'm fine. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what she did, basically. No, I saw all sorts of the Dark Crystal when I oh, was growing Mizzy, up. Mizzy says that, w that we will fight you if you spoil this for us, Gonzo. Oh, I know. That's the reason why I'd, I'm not going to. <laughs> I gotta turn it on. Mm. Come on, turn on camera. Technology is our friend. Oh, coming a problem. So while I'm trying to get the camera fixed, um, our discussion tonight is about uh, theming models. And it's not really just strictly about units and so on and so forth. It's about, you know, I got a model. I want to paint it up. How do I go ahead and try and paint it up if, it, if it's like something that's not part of a unit or part of an army, but it's a solo? Um, and we look at the things coming out about it. How do we paint it up? I mean, the longer and shorter of it is however the fuck you want. 
Correct. The whole thing about all of this is you paint your model however the hell you want. Yeah. It is your model. Yeah. You do whatever. If you want to, you know, do a Hello Kitty paint scheme, go fucking right ahead. It is yours to do that with. Nobody yeah. should I mean, ever tell you that you have to paint a certain way. Yeah, if they do, tell them to go fuck themselves. Correct. Yeah, For me. I, I have a model that I painted in a pastel goth theme. Awesome. Who does that? <laughs> Me, apparently there's a there's a large um community in battletech that's all you know super uh, friendly and they're doing they do they'll do stuff in all sorts of various you know pride flag trans flag whatever just because they want to honor that stuff and it's very cool yeah and it pisses off a large selection of people a lot and especially uh, on reddit people get upset i don't even understand like, hey, cool. Just just go like, oh, I don't like that paint scheme and wander off. You know, it's okay. You don't have to like the paint scheme. There's a there's a guy who does did like Marines, like in every possible ally flag they could find. That's fantastic. It's great. And people get up and I don't understand. Don't don't let people browbeat you or, you know, anything into trying to paint something differently than you want to. You paint your models how you want. If they don't like it, they can just wander the fuck off. They don't actually have to look at it. No. Yeah. Well, I guess it's, when, when it comes like, down to it, it is your shit. You paint it however the hell you want it. Yeah. H have you seen the cat made Marines? Yes. Right. If I were to paint Marines, that's what I'd paint. I, I saw other ones. The guy just put dog heads on Marines. I'm like, the most loyal chapter? The goodest boys? I would consider that. That's great. But sometimes it's like that. Sometimes you want something whimsical and silly. You're like, I just want to paint this in a whimsical and silly manner. And do it. Oh, yeah. Um, You know, sometimes you just want to paint it in off colors. Like, I see a bunch of stuff where people are just painting stuff and all sorts of... Maybe they've borrowed a paint scheme from lore. Maybe they borrowed a paint scheme from someone else's lore. Both are perfectly viable. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, if you're people do good. armies in Harry Potter houses, perfect. And I would say, if you're having trouble with a scheme, you should start. And I've said this a couple of times, looking at other things you like and see if you can steal a scheme from that. Yeah. Oh yeah, we we all steal paint schemes from everybody else. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, painting scheme. There's only so many colors of paint schemes. Like, you can do a unique one, but I. Everybody steals from everybody else. Nobody owns a paint scheme. Yeah, no, definitely not. Like, just, just whatever you want. If you want to paint it like. Uh, I've seen a bunch of Battletech mechs painted like Transformers. Cool. E each one differently. I'm like, that's cool. You know, and they, they, they got ones that were. that the scheme they could put on it would fit. With whatever, you know, Transformer they're trying to paint. Even if it may not be the most appropriate, just because I'm like, oh, that, that's really cool. I like that. You know, that's a cool way to paint things, you know. Um, I think my favorite crazy paint scheme I've ever seen was somebody did an, uh, an orc bus. Like the Vanga bus from the Vanga Boys. <laughs> Which was this 90s one hit wonder. <laughs> And it's super colorful and covered in flowers and yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, obviously, I had no idea who these were. I like, shock you to know that Eurobeat's not exactly John Thang. <laughs> but luckily, a quick Google search, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I understand what you're talking about. Yeah, that was one of the earliest paint, like crazy paint schemes I saw, especially on Twitch. Yeah. Um, like another one, I even reached out to, uh, the model painter that painted it. Uh, but I saw one that was done in what they called a coloring book style where they edge highlighted everything in black. Oh, the a comic book style. They called it coloring book, but yeah, it would be like a comic book style. Well, that's, um, that's cool. And also. I had the exact same model in the same size and I'm like, I want to do this. Are you okay with, with that? And she's like, oh yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, just just go with what works. I mean, so most of what I'm painting right now is Battletech and Marble Crisis Protocol. 
and Battletech. I mean, any of those games like that. Just you need to figure out your own scheme. Steal if you need to. Schemes are hard to come up with, especially mm -hmm. if you've got stuff where it's like the colors aren't always going to be in the same spots. When like Battletech, you have a bunch of different max. It's a little easier with like a 40k where you've got like Space Marines or Space Marines or Space Marines. They have the same basic component parts. Yeah. Um, but when you get into the harder stuff, uh, a game like uh, War Machine of Hordes, uh, where Gonzo is painting, where, sure, the models in the unit might all be the same unit, but they might look drastically different. Oh, yeah. Especially... You know, anything where there's sort of a hodgepodgey, rebel-y look. You, you... Yeah. Or, anything... if, yeah, or if you're painting D&D &D characters, like mm -hmm. if you're doing your own, mo your own model for, for, for your character, like think about whether you're painting it for somebody else if you're curious don't also don't be afraid to like ask people for ideas yeah because they may come up with a paint scheme color that you wouldn't even consider yeah and it may, may work it may not it may challenge you yeah. to expand your painting skills and that's important as well sometimes yeah like i i paint a lot of green skin which is i'm sure no surprise to anyone um i know john i know <laughs> I, wow so i I mean, Goblin, I, to be fair, I have goblins, to. zombies, uh, tree ants that I, oh my god, hold on, this, this is one that happened on stream, so, I saw these, these tree ants, and I'm go, oh, they look like broccoli, <laughs> so I made cheese to put on top out of YooHoo and paint, YooHoo glue stick and paint, and then smeared it on there, so it's a broccoli cheese ant now. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Which is not yeah. something I would have considered, or like I did, I just to break myself out of my green skin rut that I've gotten myself into. I pulled my uh, Twitch community during stream, and I did not leave green as an option. So I like picked everything else, and so like I'd never painted purple skin until this week. Hmm? Yeah, and, and little and things like, like your fun. broccoli cheese trend, that's that's like something sees you and strikes you. Just go. Yeah. Just go. Spoiler. These are just models. You can either get another one, or in a lot of cases, you can just repaint it. Mm -hmm. Especially keep your paint sticks with them. Or there's a lot of easy ways to strip a lot of the paint off and make it easy to go. I can help you with that. Gonzo can help you with that. I'm sure Nerd can help you with that. We, there's plenty of ideas out there. Oh, yeah. And, um, but, I will also... Uh, pre-build uh paint schemes sometimes i'll like if you can find a picture of your model either print it out or go in photoshop or paint or whatever you've got and you can like lay down colors to kind of see how it's going to look before you paint it yeah you can see you can see the get an idea of basics they do a lot of that with the there's a sheet in one of the how to paint space marines books that just had blank space marines and shoulder pads and stuff so you could like photocopy it and how is this going to look in a general sense mm -hmm. you know what's interesting about that is as a teenager you know i was learning to you know color and all this other stuff and one of the things i used to do is um it was a it was a marvel comic and it was like a who's who in the Marvel universe. And it was just, you know, it was a picture of the superhero supervillain. And then it was, you know, the bio. And I technically took the Iron Man page and photocopied it like 50 times and then took it home and just drew and colored different versions of Iron Man through the whole. So, thing. Okay. That's fun. Yeah. So I did a similar thing, but the book I got, I'd run it. I'd got it from the library. It was called how to draw comics, the Marvel way. I remember that book. Yeah, they, I had they, a, they how had, to draw Spider Man. They they had a bunch of different like general people things. They had like standard guy thing, heavier thing, or or uh, Hulk slash um, what's his name Kingpin, heavier set guy. And then they had a female model, and you could just I would just I had traced them. I had photocopied those pages at the library, and would just take them and I would make costumes and stuff using that. I think. I bought the book for my wife years ago, so I think she I'm pretty sure she took that, but it's a good book. It's got a lot of good stuff in there, but like stuff like that, you can you can test out paint schemes. Take models, like we, we all have extra models. If you don't have extra models, then I applaud your willpower. <laughs> but you can take extra models you get and, and use those for test paint schemes. Yeah. Like, 
I mean, I bought a company of Urban Mechs because how could I not buy a company of Urban Mechs? I use those for test paint schemes and everything. The only GW model that I have ever assembled and put paint on is a tester model. Hmm? I just picked one of the biggest Age of Sig or one of the biggest Age of Sigmar ones that was in the box Dominion box, and I, I picked the one with the flag so that I could like see yeah. what I was painting. And I yeah, it's my paint tester model to see how it looks. Yeah, absolutely. You, this is a bunch of things you can do with that. Test models are important, but sometimes you just gotta go with it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you as you get more experienced with colors and painting, you you will know what you're doing at the beginning, and that's just all details after that. Yeah, you might have to back up and punt with your backup color. If you watch, look, see my hobby street video. If you look at my original BattleTech models, they were uh, the shade of green has changed a couple times, and it went from yellow as the secondary to red as the secondary. You know that kind of stuff changes, but you know that's how your paint scheme evolves over time. Yeah, um, I know some people just for fun. If you want to change things up, do like three, three or four randomly drawn paints out of your box, and try to like you can have so like fun okay, just how to make these make work, or, work? Yeah. Well, this is almost good enough. Let me get a different shade uh, like this that'll mm -hmm. work better. You can do that. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So experimentation, math, yeah. science, do it. Yeah, you can do that stuff to... Do it for it, science! It, yes, it helps keep your, your color choice skills, if you will, stronger. You can use the color wheel to your, your fucking heart's content, but mm -hmm. at a certain point, you need to start making other decisions because it's not going to do it. It'll give you good, solid work every time. But sometimes you might need something a little weird. Maybe you want some to look off and you got to have that right color choice to make them just like, it looks weird like I want it to because it's got different colors. Yeah, like, uh, here's a good one that I did. Like, this is the Cat of Madness from Printed Obsession, and I ended up doing an acid green for the skin and left everything else kind of normal colored because I wanted it to look weird. Yeah, exactly. Just go a little crazy with it. Um, yeah. And then, you know, you get some things, like since I mentioned Marvel Crisis Protocol, they everyone has this driving need to paint the characters exactly like they're supposed to look in the comic book. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you don't have to. Don't ever think you have to. No. Feel free to make it your own. Yeah. If you want to, you know, paint up Captain America in totally different colors, fucking do it. You know, maybe you don't like red and gold Iron Man. Maybe it's something different. Like I did mine in the Silver Centurion armor, which is red and silver instead of red and gold. Because that was the Iron Man I, wa I, re I read when I started reading it. I go out on the internet and start searching certain characters to see alternate paint schemes when I get them just so see if there's something more interesting than what their basic is. Yeah, one thing I've seen um, Mental Health Charity Painters, who's going to be on in a few in a in a couple of weeks, um, they have done challenges where they'll give everybody the same model or bust and just seeing the different variations that come out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's part of stealing paint schemes, you know, just, just mm -hmm. find something you like. If you, if there's something you like, just use it. It's all good. Yeah. And then, and if you don't like it, you can strip the paint and paint it again. <laughs> or you can paint over it. I mean, if or paint over it. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't always have to be re. You don't have to always have to strip. You can always I mean, just repaint it. I yeah, generally it suggest a little bit at least of, of you know even getting a bit most of it off, just to helps a little bit. But yeah, even more so if you can get it off just in the cracks. That's where it tends to be the worst. You know, as you get to the 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 recesses of the model. But yeah, like I I have a um, beholder from Reaper that I had painted years ago and I tried stripping it and everything that was like. I even used a paintbrush because it's just a plastic model. Um, I couldn't get all of the paint off. It ended up giving it this like crazy albino look to it. Hmm. It was one of the earliest models I'd ever painted. I'd used, there was way too many layers of paint on it. So I oh, knew yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to get it all off. I'd soaked it multiple times, scrubbed oh. the heck out of it. And it just, not all the paint came off, but it ended up giving it this very interesting look in the end. I mean, I'll be honest, if you're having trouble getting paint off, uh, as long as you're careful with it, acetone is the answer. Yeah. Just be careful with it because it's going to eventually melt plastic, but it takes time. 
So I often apply it, then wipe it off, then take water and denature it so that you're not it's not going to melt the thing. And you get off quite a bit that way. It just takes yeah. some more time. you got to be careful. Get a toothpick, get in the little crevices. It's all good. There's lots of tricks out there. Yeah. Um, now, for army paint, painting, the hardest thing is painting the same shit again and again and again. Yes. If you've got a sort of hodgepodge, irregular feeling army, it gets a lot easier because there's little details that change here or there. Yeah. I, will, I will say, okay, so going in with that, if you're painting a space marine, you're painting a space marine. And it's all just like very poses. This is one unit of the Brine Bloods. You've got... Uh, it's not in focus. This is one model of the unit. This is another model in the unit. This is another model in the unit. Every single model is different. So it doesn't yeah, feel like you're painting a unit. Yeah, they've always been pretty good about having at least two or three poses, or at least three or four poses for every unit, yeah. which is great. Yeah. But, but yeah, Xander that... Moore says something like Tomb Kings. Yeah. I mean... Oh, God, skeletons. Horde Army, skeletons. Now, there's a trick, and it's not about painting the skeleton differently. That You're going to want to get your skeleton painting down. And you will very fucking quickly. Yeah. It's about the details, though. You know, every, every army has two or three or more highlight colors or accent colors. It's about switching up where those are. So you can have the same model if you put... Let's say the red in one place and the blue in one place, and then you swap it for the next model. They look different now. Mm -hmm. They just do. Um, or each unit can have a different shade. I had uh, um, uh, Jeter at my store did his uh, Infinity up, and then each sector, a sectoral, they're, they're each sub-faction, would be painting a slightly different shade of those two colors, of the green and purple. And he would change it up for each one, so they, they look distinct, but they'd look okay together because they're all the same basic color if he was playing the General Army. You can do a lot of a lot of stuff like that, um, but a lot of it is just making sure you're. If you're not going to do a lot of extra stuff, it's fine. It's making sure you choose a paint scheme you want to paint. Yeah, because I've definitely had ones where I've started painting it, and I'm like, I hate this. Yeah, there's paint schemes that work great for a single model here or there, but if you're doing a fucking whole bunch of models, you're like, nope, nope, I gotta. You know, my BattleTech models, I was doing a. A, a greenish gray more gray than green and then washing it to get it to be green and I'm like this is too much trouble for touch ups and all if I'm painting a whole army I need to use green as the base just so I can go back over it easier oh yeah yes Xander exactly pirates from uh, from Harvard Press three colors B squad has one color as the main color absolutely just little things like that will go a long way yep uh, with Space Marines, it's getting used to painting or having something as, you know, squad color or something like that. Like, the one of the best things GW did back in the day was when they had their Imperial Guard codex, like they were still the Imperial Guard, and they would say, hey, you know, companies and color and squad servers use like a three-color format to show their units as their lore. And I'm like, that's great. So you can apply it to anything. So you can paint these colors and you know what group they're with. And it's just like a shoulder pad or something, so it becomes easier. Or stripes in the helmet or something like that. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. But with any bigger army, you really got to make sure you're painting what you like. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a well-duh, but it is. The more difficult you make something, the harder it's going to be to paint a whole army of it. And if you're painting 10, no big deal. If you're painting 50, it's a bigger deal. Oh, yeah. You know about painting uh, orcs, so... Uh... <laughs> I've painted more than my fair share of orcs. And also, that's the thing where maybe you tag team with somebody. You know, my, uh, my ex-wife liked to paint but didn't play the games, so I would get orcs to a certain point, and she'd like, oh, I like that one. She'd grab it, and she'd put details on it and put it aside, and it'd be done. Cool. We did a bunch of stuff. We got some second-hand orcs. She loved grabbing those and just touching them up. It's all the basic colors with this were painted, you know? Tabletop standard. More than three colors, but you know, nothing great, no shading or anything. But they're green and it was, it was fine. She went through and she touched stuff up. I'd touch stuff up. We'd go back. It was great. Like, honestly, there's a lot of fun in that. And sometimes you can find cheap stuff on eBay that's partially painted not well. And you'd be like, you can just touch it up. That's that's fun in and of itself. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you're painting an army, like for an event coming up, you can go through and paint them super basic. You don't have to make everything super good. You can go tabletop 
And then you can go back later and pay them up more. Because that's its own level of fun. Yeah, add more detail. It, remember that art projects are never completed, just abandoned. Rarely do you ever get to a model and go like, I could never ever do anything more with that. It's more like, I am not getting more with that because this spent up my fucking life on it already. Yeah, like I'm looking at this guy that I painted for my husband a couple of years ago. And I'm like, there's so much more that I could do with this. But I've also learned a lot in those last two yeah. years, and my style has changed. But sometimes it's good enough. People yeah, people scoff at good enough. No. You know what good enough is? It's good, good enough. enough. <laughs> Not everything has to be, like, you know, tabletop perfect, I'm going to put it in a painting competition. Unless yeah. that's your thing. If it's your thing, more power to you. But uh, as a wise man once says, man's got to know his limitations. Does, does Dirty Harry count? Maybe he does. I don't know. But the, it's important. Like it's 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 one of those you, know, you joke. It's a movie line, but it's actually words of wisdom. You should know your limitations. It doesn't mean you can't push them. But if you know there is no way you're going to paint a certain scheme on your entire army, painting it on one model is a fucking mistake because you're not going to do it on the whole army. And unless you're like, I want this to be my showcase, perfectly cool. But you have to make sure it's not going to bother you that one model looks so much better than the rest. Because sometimes people do that. I've seen it where I've put an army out and like, hey, John, is that the first model you painted? Yes. How can you tell? Because you did so much more on it. <laughs> it's fine. Yep. Honestly, sometimes it's good to do your test on character models. It's just they're expensive nowadays. Yeah. Back in the day, they weren't super expensive. Nowadays, it's like, holy shit balls. Mm. Shit balls. Or you could be like me, where I rarely paint more than one of anything. Those two goblins that I painted last week were the first time I've painted duplicates of anything. And now I've got four bandits that I'm trying to figure out how to make them look slightly distinct from each other. I've painted three urban mechs recently. And I got two more primed up ready to go though they're converted but you know, I got you know these two guys sitting here you've mm -hmm. got more goblins to paint also nerd yeah, I know more goblins more green skin what's wrong with that they can be red skin goblins they can be but then they look like a kobold <laughs> I mean kobolds should have more long in his snout that's true <laughs> well it, it's funny because we did this I don't know if it was on this or paint without John, we did something where we did alternate paint schemes because uh, my uh, my friend Dave uh, Value, who's a local, and he painted up his works in not green because he's like, everyone does green, I'm not doing green. And they look cool. He's got this red scheme for their skin. It looks very cool. Well, it's like my troll buds. My troll, they're, they're typically a blue-green color, and I'm like, nah, I want red trolls. Uh, mine had been orange, and the uh, little armor spotty things were blue. Hi, Cookie. Hey, hey cookie. cookie. How's your ma? I mean, <laughs> Sorry, running joke about Cookie's mom. I, I figured. <laughs> uh, so, Manion, you're sort of getting to the point of what you don't do. There is no right and wrong color scheme for any skin. It's so whatever fucking color yeah. you want to paint it. It's your model. If I your human beings are pink skinned, it's fine. Make them pink skinned. Works for me. I have an Axolotl that I painted in like a fiery scheme and gave them Romita eyes. Like, it eyes it's like great. It. <laughs> but no, yeah, so you, you want to make sure you're uh, you're thinking about your overall army paint scheme when you start it. Yeah, because to me, I never want to do something super complicated because if I have to do 90 of those models, I'm going to have to redo, you know, I'm going to have to do it 90 times. Yeah, Or break it down into chunks. If you have to do 90 models, sure, maybe do 90 models of tabletop. And then you maybe go back and start upping them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, honestly, I find once a model is tabletop, it is so much easier to go and just do details. Yeah. 
I, I forget that sometimes because I get this point. I already had this problem. I don't have it so much anymore. I've sort of gotten past it. Where model gets to that point where it's just fucking ugly. Like, sure, you started base coat. It just looks terrible. It's not clean because I don't paint very clean. And you're just like, God, this is terrible. I suck. Why am I still going? But if you fight through that and get it to tabletop and everything's clean, you clean the line, something you're like, oh, I can go further. I'm enjoying this again. Yeah. Well, that's another... Every model goes through an ugly stage. Yeah. That's another self-knowledge thing. You have to know that you hate that and that you have to power through it. Mm-hmm. And maybe you got to put it down for things because other things in your life are challenging and you can't, you do not have the spoons for it. That's okay. You can come back to it. That's the the dirty secret of models. You can always come back and paint them more. Yeah. If you want to, uh, another fun thing to experiment on, like say you don't have a bunch of extra models sitting around. Do you have a bunch of extra bases? I mean, yeah yeah like just it doesn't have to necessarily be a shape a flat yeah. surface can also be something to test different patterns to see how details. the paints look okay prime it whatever yeah. color you're gonna prime it to be like oh okay cool i see how that looks now because you don't know till you look yeah. that's the coolest thing about trying all the cuttlefish colors and two thin coats is more so with the colorfish cu- cuttlefish colors you're like, how does this particular one look? You know, because they're 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 the uh, the sketch and uh, sketch what's it and called? glaze, sketch and glaze. And that's not not my style. So interesting to see how they can work for other things. Mm-hmm. You know, and you don't know till you test them. And you can't just sit there and go like, oh, I'll just stick. You can sit with your old old comfortable. Don't ever feel bad sticking with your comfort. If that's as good as you want to get, and if that is what keeps you going and makes you joy it's perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with it oh, you yeah, don't pop- actually Oops, sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh i was reading xander's like popsicle sticks can add depth to a model like if you're if you want to add texture to a base uh-huh. or something like that popsicle sticks stir sticks yeah make fun bases absolutely don't yeah. don't neglect any part of it but um don't ever feel like you have to challenge yourself though you don't have to have like, fun. Yeah. If it's, if it's bringing you joy to keep, do keep on, keep it on. Some of us don't like change. And honestly, at the end of the day, you challenging yourself is change. And if it's not good for you, don't do it. Don't let anyone tell you you have to like, Oh, you've been painting the same way for 20 years. Yeah. Well, fuck off. It's how I paint. It's personal, you know? And, on the other end, if someone asks for your advice, give your advice. If someone doesn't, just make comments. Oh, I like the way this looks, or you know, whatever, you know. If they don't want it, unless it's Gonzo, tell them how to paint his models, because he doesn't fucking know. <laughs> but, but you know, in general, you know, don't, like, I see people paint on Facebook. I'm like, that is a basic paint job. This person's just starting out. Cool. I'm not going to jump on like, hey, you tried dinning your paint down? He hasn't asked for my fucking advice. He doesn't know who the fuck he is. He doesn't care who the fuck I am. You know, he's painting the models. If they ask for advice, be yeah, free to give it. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can say something like, oh, you know, I like where you're going with this. You know, if you thin your paints down a little bit, you'll get a little clearer coat and things. You could, that's the way to phrase your advice. It's all about phrasing. Yeah. One thing customer service has taught me is anything about phrasing. I can tell people to go fuck themselves in the nicest possible way. As long as you phrase it well. Because there's a way of telling people things in a way that's respectful and a way that's disrespectful. And to get a tiny, tiny off topic, media and social media in particular has shown us a lot of the wrong way and try to frame it like it's okay. It's not. Yep. It's not. You know, Wheaton's Law, don't be a dick. Don't Unless be that person's an asshole, in which case you can, it's okay. okay. Don't be a dick because... unless you have to be a dick. No, 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 because it's, it's, like, it's like tolerance. They are... Um, social constructs. If you've chosen not to partake of this particular social contract, then you are no longer bound by it, and we don't have to be nice to you. It's the, you've chosen to not be nice to everyone as a default, now we don't have to be nice to you. You can fuck right off. But anyway, it's back there. Um, You know, unsolicited advice, not great, but try to give advice when you can. Yeah. You know? And 
I've seen people walk by a table at a game store and be like, turn their noses up. Don't ever fucking do that. You don't know this person's life. Yeah. I know people who can barely see shakiest hands and they're fucking making an effort, which in some days is more than I fucking do. Don't try to live it. Just be like, oh, cool. You know, they're paying. Like, they're making a fucking effort. Shouldn't that be good enough? This is a hobby. This isn't work. Like, yes, yeah, so if someone at your work is just making a fucking effort, well, maybe you need to help them do better. But it's a hobby. It's not work. We're not getting paid. We're supposed to enjoy this. If they enjoy the way their models come out, it's not on any of us for some. Much like if they enjoy painting with, playing with just unpainted models, their 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 imagination is good enough they don't have to paint it. That's fine. I mean, I know people who said I don't play people play people with unpainted models. Well, then you're the asshole. Not everybody has the time and the and the resources. And and some people just have a mental thing. Um, I have, I know two people. You know, um, there are certain uh, armies my ex wife wanted to paint, but she wouldn't because she'd look at the game's workshop book and be like, "I can't paint like this. Why should I try?" Oh. Some people are like that. They like, I have to be able to do it well, or I'm not going to do it. And that's the mental thing. Yeah. But we have to accept that. If they choose to try and make themselves better, we can help them. But if they don't, don't fucking try and force it. And yeah. then my buddy Norrin, he's just like, I can't paint well. I don't want to take the time to do it, so I'm not going to paint. Okay, dude. Thumbs up. I'm not going to judge you for it. It's your fucking choice. It's your life. we got to be like that, especially in our hobbies. we got to be more understanding. Now, if Norrin comes and say, John, I want to paint stuff. Can you help me? Fucking I will be there. Yeah. As much as possible helping him. I'm not going to tell him he has to. He doesn't have to. He can do what he wants. We can all do what we want. You know? I did what I want. Exactly. And, and we have to we have to be supportive. Mutually supportive. You know? Not everyone's going to be able to do that. So. There's the, the, the social emotional part of it, kind of. I feel like maybe I got a little off, off the main topic, kind of. No, we would. Not. It all kind of ties topic. in together. <laughs> yeah, it does, but you know, it's 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 tough. I actually like how that metallic's coming out on him. It's looking really good. Yeah. Which metallic is that? That is the scale seventy five black metal. Yep, I, I thought like so. That. Black metal so good. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's a darker, it's just, but still, it's just kind of. It it's not just dark. It's got like a sort of bluish tint rather than yeah. just black. Yeah. It looks just good. It looks really good on that, the way it's going on. Yeah, I really like it. I, I, I use it for when I want something to be a darker tone metal that's kind of like worn or, you know, used, not brand new. I'll use, <laughs> I'll use it as a base coat for any silverish metal because you could just paint the uh, heavy metal, which is their next level up, over it. Mm. And, you know, just by standard, not going all out on it, you get a little bit of shading in there, too. A little bit of blue shading, too. And then even a wash on top, it tends to help as well. Yeah, I use the cuttlefish metallic, so I use I usually do a base of gun metal, and then mm -hmm. work up to a silver or yeah. steel. It's much like that. It's just this has just got a little more of a bluish tint to it. Mm -hmm. I just like like as a one coat on that model, just from the camera, it looks great. Oh yeah. Like, this is an example. I like you could just do one coat and boom. Yeah, so it kind of sits perfectly in it. She said, it's like how I told my friend today. He's not a painter, but wants to get his 3D Catan board painted. I told him to come over and work on it together. Absolutely. That sounds like so much fun. Mm, dry brush the shit out of that stuff, too. Well, one of the most fun we had is back in the Games Dirt Workshop days, um, they put out their campaign stuff, where it's little hexes, plastic hexes you put together. Mm -hmm. And, I mean... I'm not, I'll run the main thing of it, but I'm not going to paint all that. That's crazy talk. So what I did, I got everyone who's playing. I'm like, here's a couple for you. Here's a couple for you. And like everyone paint it, just paint. And they did. It was great. And you know, like they don't all look the same. Yeah. It was fine though. Look great. Yep. It was a fun but... change of pace. Everyone helped out. Don't, don't overlook that either. If you guys are all playing a board game. So we talk about miniature games so much. Board games nowadays have a lot of models to them. Yeah. If you guys are playing it a lot, see if maybe they're going to paint it. You know, if you're painting, um, oh, what's it called? Shadows of Brimstone. Maybe Blue you're, comp yeah, maybe you're playing a certain character in there. Maybe like, can I paint this model? 
Maybe they say yes. You know, offer, help. Maybe like, hey, we want to paint the monsters. You take a couple of these, you take a couple of these, you take a couple of these. Cool. Go. Yeah. No, I don't want to discount the, the, the fun of that. And role-playing, if you're playing a role-playing game with a map in person, which seems to be the rarity nowadays, maybe you want to play with models. We used to do it all the time. Yeah. You know, get your model, paint them up. I I wish I had taken pictures of them, but uh, my buddy, uh, the Jason, back at work at Games Workshop, and they had bits, would make all of his models of the Games Workshop bits, and it was great. His first character was basically fucking Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> And he literally took Games Workshop bits and made a guy that looked like Vegeta. That's fantastic. You know, it's great. That's the, that's the fun kind of stuff you can get together. It doesn't have to be first, perfect sometimes. The, Go ahead. the first miniatures game that I would love to get my hands on now that they've re-released it is Hero Quest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those I mean, minis those... are a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and it's just... Sometimes fun. I've got uh, G.I. Joe Mission Critical. I had to look over to see the name is. I haven't actually yep. played it yet because we were supposed to play it for uh, New Year's, but no one showed up. Or, sorry, one person didn't show up. Mm. Um, it's got lots of G.I. Joe models. Maybe I paint them. Maybe not. Yeah. I've got Joe. some alternate Crisis Protocol min uh, minis that I don't know if they would be allowed. Like, I would love to like play with them at some point, but... I don't know if people would allow them. So that's a good, good little, little thing is, I mean, to an extent in a friendly game, if someone won't allow a, a, a proxy that you can easily tell something else, that person is the problem. Yeah. Now, obviously in a legitimate event, we've had a whole thing in battle tech where everyone's like, I can't believe they're not letting us use 3d printed models in official event. Just a response was go fuck yourself. That's a whole like, different story. You have to know why. If it's an official event, they want you buying their stuff because that's yeah. how they stay in business. Yeah, no, a friendly game, it makes sense. And yeah. that those are, yeah, those those can be a lot of fun if finding some of those alternate sculpts or prints of stuff. and but, Or sometimes the model you just don't like. Yeah. Example. I'm not the biggest fan of the Iron Fist model for Marvel Crisis Protocol, and I, I fucking love Iron Fist. I talking about that. So I went out of my way. Not only do I have a 3D printed one from one of those companies that makes it that I need to get together eventually and, and paint, but I found the one from, I forget what game it is, but the other Marvel game that's got the little Marvel chibi guys. United. Marvel United. Okay. I bought the Iron Fist from somebody who didn't want it. I came with the cards, apparently, too, in case I ever play that. Nice. on there and i painted that up and i have it magnetized so it can be on its base where i can magnet it to its its marvel crisis protocol base and that's my fucking iron fist there you why go. because i like it better than the other one that's fine do i yeah. expect to use it in an official event not necessarily i don't really care it's okay yeah like i've got i think an alternate gambit and a couple of others but yeah I gotta remember I have those, and maybe you and I could do a paint night where we paint Marvel. Maybe the next time we do pass the paint water. I'm I'm down. I'm Gonzo. Really, <laughs> really. <laughs> but yeah, so there's a lot of that stuff, and it's a, it's a, a lot there, <laughs> and a lot of it comes oh, to on both sides us not being. On one side, dicks about it, and the other side's too precious about it. Yeah. Like, if someone's like, oh, I have a problem with you using that Iron Fist model. Yeah, they're the problem, but I'm not going to be a jackass about it. If I'm playing a game, I'm like, okay, cool. I'll tell you what, I'm going to switch my list real quick. I'm going to take him out and put someone else in. Because I don't have the regular one. I didn't buy it. I got a Luke Cage secondhand. And I got extra cards from a guy who bought them. So I'll, I'll do that. And then I'll just make a mental note. Never play that guy again. Like... We forget that this is a two-way street. Yeah, you know? and using, like, the Marvel Crisis Protocol, you don't have to, or anything, you don't have to use the box art. Like, say, we were talking no. about earlier, you find one any alternate that scheme. Did, yeah, any alternate scheme. Or, like, you know what? I want to make them look evil. Let's use this villains. Yeah. 
You could be like, I want to paint everything in like sort of that new style X Force thing where they're all black and white and they have some red and red eyes. Like, cool. Mm -hmm. I want to paint Captain America like that. Do it. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Have fun. That is the main thing. Yeah. Have fun with it. No one can tell you that's not Captain America because you know what? They're wrong. That's your Captain America. And it looks different. Why? It's Captain America's ass. Because you said so. <laughs> Captain America. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, however you want it like just and on the other end if someone paints something you're like unless it's literally offensive which is really hard to do and yeah for the record if someone comes up with and you're playing a world war ii game and there's stuff's painted up like nazis it's a world war ii game don't fucking get upset about it yeah you it's, put yourself in that it's position. kind of a thing let's not read like i can understand what comes up and their imperial guard is painted like actual can nazis like you may have a problem understood 100 yeah. percent with you but if you're playing a world war ii game take it as they're just playing the game you know it's like people are like i have a friend who's like i won't play baron zemo or red skull because they're nazis I'm like okay that's your choice yeah i mean you'll, you'll play the, the the racial supremacist that's magneto instead that's cool yeah. But, you know, but that's their choice. They're not, he's, he never once says, I hate that you're playing that model, John, because he's a Nazi. No, he's like, I won't do it. I'm like, that's cool. You can have whatever standards you want as long as you don't try to hold someone else to your standards. He was also very amused because I was playing, I love Baron Zemo mechanically for the rules. It's great. Also, the dance in Winter Soldier was great. But, anyways. And he was super amused by the, you know, I sort of get my sh a little too far in my enemy space, and I'm like, this is going to end poorly, so I did Operation Sacrifice Nazi, and I played Avengers Assemble, and all my Avengers moved away, leaving Zemo up there. He thought that was hilarious. To sacrifice the Nazi. But yeah, so I mean, like, it's, it's there's a lot of things there, and a lot of it just start and end with, don't be a dick. Yep. And paint however you want. Yeah, the only time that you well, can I ever be purple. concerned about... Oh, yeah, this yeah. is my favorite purple. Uh, yeah. About painting something is if you're doing it for competition, and it's like historical reenactment gets very, very picky on that. But that's oh, because yeah. you're doing it because there's a reason behind. You want to be historically accurate in that color scheme. But yeah. if somebody's not going to play you because it's not historically accurate color scheme... Fuck them. Now, uh, one slight exception to that. If you're playing historicals with a big historical crew, yeah, it can be understandable if they want that level of accuracy. Correct. But they should make that clear, and you should know that going in. That's my only... Yeah, usually you know. Caveat to that. Yeah, usually you know. But, like, back in the day, they were just... They were like, you know that whole joke, like, you can't play them. Those buttons are the wrong color. Nah, dude, fuck right off. <laughs> There's a point where you're taking that shit too far. Anyways. By the way, I'm trying out some new paintbrushes, except for the one I got in my hand right now. Uh, I bought some new paintbrushes, and these are uh, golden maples. And they're, they got these little, you know, the thicker handle parts. Um, so I'll be trying these out this week to see if they're worth it because they were actually pretty cheap for a shit ton of brushes. So I'm going to try them out this week and see how well they hold up to my torture chest. Let me swing this around because it's almost media section. I'm going to break everything. Maybe. It's your stuff, though. It is. Yeah, but yeah, them historicals be nutty sometimes. Yeah. But I mean, that's you, if you're going to a historical game, that's kind of what you're 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 getting into that, and you yeah, should. Know but that. you know, as a historical player, and I don't think anyone would listen to us. But if you are, make sure you're being clear. Yeah. You know, setting setting the the quote unquote rules you guys follow. It's like house rules. Like, hey, we have to have stuff painted exactly. But the button thing is an extreme example. I that maybe happened once ever. But in the internet age now, you hear about it. Actually, you know what? I've heard about it before in the internet age. So it probably did really happen in just 
made its way around the social circles. Like the gazebo story. But that's role playing. The dread gazebo? Look, man, don't fuck with gazebos. I put one in a campaign encounter yeah. just to fuck with my players, and they immediately started attacking it. And I'm like, nothing happens. <laughs> it's just a gazebo. They didn't believe me. <laughs> it's more funny because it's fairly obvious that person has no idea what a gazebo is, and all the D&D demons demons or devils? One of the two are named in that sort of fashion, so he obviously thought it was a devil or something. Mm-hmm. Which just makes it extra hilarious. To be fair, though, until I heard that story, I had no idea what a gazebo was. <laughs> I it's only did because really... we had, like, some picture of one from... Uh, that my parents had up in our house. And so I always just... Or, or Dr. Demento, gazebo. Bulbis Buffat. Dr. Demento. <laughs> yep. Those were the days. And that brings Tuning us to him in on my AM, AM radio. Man. Oh. oh, that was the only reason my parents would let me stay up past 10 p.m. on a Sunday night. <laughs> was to listen to Dr. Demento. Um, it is media section time. John, how many you got tonight? Uh, two, because I watched something you today and yesterday. Okay. Nerd, how many you got? Dos also. Two. Uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Of course you do. I'm going to give one, uh, and, and two of them Who's are just like, like, I'm still watching. <laughs> um, one of them I watched, and uh, it was a documentary. So there's not like a rating to give this because it's a documentary type you thing. You can rate documentaries. But, uh, you can absolutely rate documentaries. Yeah, but this one is uh, The Greatest Night in Pop, uh, which is a documentary on We Are the World. Oh, and so it talks about how they set up We Are the World and shows like the all the behind scenes footage and stuff like that. And it was just neat to see this and see some of these, uh, you know, artists come together and you know actually see them do this. Because I mean, of course, I'm old enough to <laughs> ring the bell. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when the song came out, um, and it you know it actually did you know weird things to the world. I actually do want to comment on how you can rate, because if they're saying this like this is the greatest night in pop, really, they're just doing what the Brits did years before with Band-Aid. Correct. With Do and They Know It's Christmas. And they brought that out, too. They brought, cool. that, they brought cool. that up, too. Then, um, that then that was playing. in there also, because it's also you had Farm Aid after that, after a while. Yeah, and... Farm Aid, yeah. There was a, it was a big deal. Like There was a lot yeah. of... I mean, musicians have always been good about coming together, but they're really coming together there in the 80s. Yeah. And so it, yeah. it was really neat to see and look at all these, you know, artists that are like in their 70s now, you know, and of course, Cindy Lauper looks the same as she was 70 and when she was, you know, 16 type thing. I mean, she's you no, know, honestly, but she looks amazing for 70 years old. Um, but it was just an interesting little thing to hear, you know, people talk about it and show the behind scenes footage of them getting ready. And, you know, you can tell they were like, and so and so was quite drunk during the entire time we did this. And. <laughs> You know, Waylon Jennings noping out when Stevie Wonder suggested that uh, they do a, a lyric in Swahili. And Waylon Jennings like, nope, I'm out. And he actually leaves. <laughs> hmm. So it was it was interesting. A good you, country boy like Waylon Jennings? I'm shocked. Yeah. And like, so, I love Waylon Jennings, but that's kind of on brand for a country boy like him. Yeah. But uh, it, it was just interesting to see. It was uh, a neat to see it happen. Uh, they talked about, you know, things that happened after it. Like you said, you know, they talked about Band-Aid and they talked about Farm Aid and all that other stuff. And then Live Aid. Live like, Aid. Yeah. Live Aid. I might have even gone so far as to say that the greatest moment in pop was Queen at Wembley during Live Aid. <laughs> uh, I'll get to that when peak. I re- I'll get to that during my review. <laughs> oh, shit. I know what movie you watched. Uh, so, I mean, it, <laughs> it, it was pretty interesting just to see it and, you know, go, damn, I remember when this song came out and how big yeah, it was. Yeah, it was and a big deal. Everybody sang it like crazy and it, you know, was a big shock around type thing. But it was interesting. I'm not going to rate it because it's just a documentary. and It's just nice to see some of that stuff. Although, you know, looking back. at Well, these... I mean, they, they, they covered everything. So, like, if they didn't, if they didn't cover Band-Aid. Yeah. Uh, you know, before that, then maybe you go like, well, you know, they forgot some stuff. But nowadays... There's such higher quality. Yeah, but I mean, it was it was because there's no excuse. The internet, yeah. you can you can research so much now. It's great. Yeah, 
So I, I had a, I had a blast with it. I, I enjoyed the crap out of it. Uh, it was fun to see. Uh, John. Uh, so the first one I watched uh, is True Lies. I'll we'll rewatch. Oh man, be honest. I've seen this a couple times. Well, you know, every time in a while some stuff comes up, and I'm like, you know, I want to rewatch that. I was looking for the watch, and I'm like, I can watch The Rocketeer. I'm like, oh, True Lies. I'll watch True Lies. Um, I and seen that in a long time. Yeah, it's it's still good, but I. It's weird because it is sort of the prototype for breaking the James Bond mold. Uh, I'm sure stuff came before that did it, but it was the first blockbuster that sort of broke the James Bond mold while still being a spy movie. You know, spy with a family. Arnold completely playing a different type of character than he would. Um, and then turning it on his head. You know, he's still suave and debonair, but he's not like, you know, a you know, womanizing whatever. And uh, it was, it's a kind of a breath of fresh air after a lot of the Bond stuff. Very different. But it's got some some some... It's got some fun. It's got some flaws. It's got a cast that definitely hits. Like, the entire cast hits. Remind me, who's the bad guy in that? Um, I forget the guy's name. He's a Middle Eastern guy. And he does a good job, though. He's just... Okay. That's actually one of my problems with the movie. Is not the bad guy. It's that he comes from nowhere as an immediate badass. And you guys don't know that he's a badass. So it's like, why is this... It feels very odd in the context of the movie, you know? Mm. They're sort of breaking convention by not, um... Not building him up. Uh, Art Malik is the bad guy. Okay. Um, Tia Carrera is in it also. She's a bad girl. Bad girl, bad girl. Tom Arnold, great in it. Oh, like, it showed... That's when we like, Tom Arnold can be the comic sidekick. I like it with this because it's not too much comedy. You feel like him and Arnold Schwarzenegger have been doing this shit for years. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, Bill Paxton's in it for a bit, like the... That's a right. Bit in the middle. And, and Eliza, great because Eliza Dishku too, yeah. plays the daughter. Daughter, yeah. Well, I just because it starts off very fast, very much goes, and then you get this weird subplot in the middle, which is not what you expect. This kind of movie. Normally, you feel like, oh, you know, family troubles, cheating on each other, but then you turn out like, no, it's not that. It's actually something else. With Bill Paxton, and, and Bill Paxton fucking nails it. He's great. Like, few people could actually play that role, I feel like. Even though it's like a secondary role, he just does a great job. And he, it's a fun mill, and then it goes from there directly into the end, and the end is super fast-paced. The best thing is it's so fast-paced, you don't have time to realize just how fucking incredulous this shit is at some points. But it's got some fun moments. It's enjoyable. It's very much sort of iconic nowadays. There's a couple scenes that are great. It does make people love the Harrier jump jet, even though the Harrier jump jet doesn't do that. That's not how it works, but it works for the movie. I'd say the only giant flaming flaw with this movie, aside from not setting up the bad guy properly, is the soundtrack's just okay. The score's not iconic or anything. You probably couldn't pick it out of a crowd. Yeah. It's like it's like workman style, but not like I'm sitting there going like, yeah, this doesn't have like that theme you know which is weird for james cameron because terminator you fucking know the terminator theme oh yeah aliens has a great theme you can understand i don't know if avatar does but to be fair i've only seen it once yeah same um but that's sort of my opinion like and i'm a big soundtrack guy a lot of times so i feel like it's the big big downside is the soundtrack's not as iconic as it would need but still great i give it one and a half it's still a great time I'd like to get it on a better... I think I have it on DVD. I'd like to get it on Blu-ray for a better picture, but it's super fun. It's a great change of pace if you want to do some spy stuff and not be as batshit crazy as something like Kingsman or yeah. as super serious something as Current Bond. What about Last Action Hero? <laughs> can we not talk about Last Action Hero? So We can if you want to, because no, I bought but... it recently because my one podcast I listened to covered it. Like, did, like, a super long episode. And I'm like, you know what? I'm giving another try. Yeah, I shouldn't have. I will just always remember the scene where he goes, Look, elephant! And then dumps the body off the side of the building. Yeah, it's a movie deserving of its own entry in here if I watch it again. Yes. Uh, but, Nerd, go ahead with your first one. 
Uh, I rewatched Bohemian Rhapsody, which is one that I watch probably two to three times a year. Oh, it's no. I'm a big Queen fan, and it's one that I will just put on for background. But like, I actually sat down and like watched it, watched it again so for the. I'm first actually time. also a big Queen fan. I've actually seen them live, but <sighs> I've never seen that movie. I know you're looking at me like that. It's not anywhere I've seen streaming for free, and it's not like I'm going out of my way for it. Well, I own it. We we yeah. own a, a physical copy, so. Yeah. Um, but media, yeah, no, Rami Rami Malik just absolutely kills uh, it as Freddy. I've heard great things about it. Yeah, he even got like he had the the prosthetic teeth. Um, and he got them bronzed or gold plated after after the after. the movie, That's but awesome. like it's actually him singing in 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 a lot of the scenes. I that isn't that the way now. Taron Egerton sang most of the stuff for Rocket Man, so I appreciate all the actors' dedication to doing these things. Yeah, yeah, uh, which is one I'll probably watch next week. <laughs> <laughs> I might rewatch that. That's that's that was a good one. Yeah. Um I know there was a lot of debate when it first came out about how accurate it is because it's it's it seems to paint a couple of the members in a much nicer light than apparently they were um in terms of how well they got along. Which is rare for one of those. Normally they paint people in a worse light than it actually was. Yeah, but it's the ones that are still alive that were controlling that, so. I mean, hey, you know, I'm never going to fall to a movie for trying to paint things in a slightly brighter light. Yeah. No, Maybe but not. it it starts and ends with Live Aid. And that whole... They, they end the movie with the Live Aid performance, and it's just a knockout um yeah it's, it was a knockout yeah which is great just an absolute knockout and i had gotten live aid the actual like dvd for my dad years ago and sat down and watched it with him again uh after i saw bohemian rhapsody the first time and yeah i <sighs> It's not a perfect movie, but it's really damn good, so I give it, like, half. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Gonzo? Um, I watched something because it came out uh, recently on streaming. Uh, John recommended it, uh, and we actually talked about it a couple of times. Uh, and it was Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Okay, um, part one. Yeah, part Even one. Even though there's not going to be a part two. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Fuck them. Um, no, no, I, I, no. That, that's pure marketing that is purely yeah. playing on people who are like, oh, part one, part two, blah, blah. Go fuck yourself, people. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did not realize that this movie was almost three hours long, by the way, when we sat down to watch it last night. <laughs> You're welcome. <gasps> Hi, V. Hey, V. Mew's already been done for the whole time, so no worry about it. We're good on Mew. Um, I did not know it was almost three hours long. Um, it is definitely a Mission Impossible uh, movie. Yeah, 100% you can say this is Mission Impossible. Um, uh, Mission Impossible Dead Wrecking, V. Um, it is very much... You know what's interesting is I saw another movie in the theater, but then I saw I saw this first. And the one thing I like about Tom Cruise and his movies is there's not a shit ton of green screen fake shit going on. And if it is, it's hard to tell. But there is a lot of, we're going to fuck up a bunch of cars... Because we're going to be racing down a track, or we're going to be we're going to be destroying real property, type yeah. thing. We're going to be doing things, you know, the old school way where we didn't have CGI or green screen and stuff like that. And I really appreciated that about this movie was there was a ton of action and a ton of fun. Uh, the car chase scene was great. Um, it was right spot on. Just enough, and I wouldn't say comedy, but just enough um, humor. Humor, because it wasn't it wasn't a joke and it wasn't funny. It was like shit. How are they going to do this? And you're like, you know, you drive, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, it, it's. I mean, they have a style. Yeah. And 
they're nailing it. And but let's be honest, I'm I'm gonna say something slightly controversial. Mission what? Impossible is the best action movie series ever. It, it, this one was really good. It was. I I did not expect it to be th- almost three hours long. Um, there were just a couple of things they could have cut I keep out. Saying that, yeah, I was not expecting it. I was I was like, oh fuck, it's late, guys. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great fun. I think there were some scenes that just you know it was like the ending train scene where them you know doing things that it might. You could have cut that out and just cut it to something simpler and it would have been okay. Um, but I... But the motorcycle jump <laughs> that he actually did. No, no, no. I'm talking about where the train is falling off. Oh, yeah. I mean, and yeah, then trying yeah. to climb out of it. I was like, there was just way too much stuff going on in there. And I was just like... I was like, you could have cut out some of they this stuff. They have to end on a big thing, though. Yeah. That's, that's their brand. I mean, it was cool. It was a lot of fun. It was very much a Mission Impossible. I still love Simon Pegg and Vin Rains as their characters. They're oh, yes. great in that. They're always fun Simon to watch. Simon Pegg was the reason I started re- started watching the Mission Impossible movies yeah. again. I mean... He's, he was a great addition when he came in in 3? Three? Three? I, I think it's 3. But yeah, three or it was 4. Good... Yeah. Pretty sure it was 3, but yeah. But it was good Which fun. is where they changed to this current... Storyline? one in... Well, because one and two, one was much more spy thriller than yes. action, but very cool. Yeah. Yep. Two was John Woo. Yeah. That's its mm-hmm. own style, if you don't know that. And then three, mm-hmm. they sort of came into this whole mix of spy and action that just works perfectly, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I'm really a huge good. fan of the series. I, I, I mean, I have my only complaint is it was so fucking long, and I wasn't prepared See, for that. That's the thing. It's not that it was so long, you were prepared. Yeah. I was I, like, holy this crap. This is weird, but. I know that how long every movie I'm going to watch is before I watch it because I need to know. Yeah. It was two hours and 40 some odd minutes or something like that. And I'm like, whew. Uh, I also know because the guys who do uh, everything great about did everything great about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. And it was their part one of it because it's like it's a three hour long movie. I'm like, yep. Yeah. So um, overall for Space Herpes wise, I give it a one. But I mean, it, it's good fun. You're just going to have to take your time. Just be ready for it being a three-hour movie. Yeah. And it it does end satisfactorily, even though it's a part one. Yeah. It ends like, it's end, cool, but you know it's going to continue off there. I like that. No issue with that. Oh, Cookie, it's going to happen. Eventually, we're going to get... I haven't watched it yet. I may. The, the, The reviews... Someone reviewed Madam Web, like, not as, like, an actual review. Someone's like, they tell me that Madam Web is, like, a combination of uh, Catwoman and uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. And I'm like, fuck my life, what? But those are the worst. Yes, those are the worst. <laughs> just named They're the two so wor- bad. Okay. The two worst theatrically released superhero movies, I have to add that. Because there are some Captain America movies that made for TV and they came out in the fucking 70s and were not good. Anyways. Uh, my next one? Yep. Um, watched it today. Brain. Oh, um, The 13th Warrior. Antonio oh, Banderas. Love that movie. How does that movie only have like a fucking 33% rating on fucking IMDb and shit? What is wrong with people? I love it. Like... I understand how it failed in the theater because, I mean, I wasn't didn't have a lot of time to go to the theater when it came out, but I'm like, I can see people not understanding what it was, but even Rob, Roger Ebert gave it like, you know, like a, you know, whatever, a bad rating just because he's like, ah, you know, it, it doesn't really take time to tell a story. I'm like, it does actually tell exactly the story it needs to tell. Well, basically the story it tells is fucking Beowulf. It just combines that with some uh, writings of a um, Middle Eastern guy from Baghdad uh, who, according to his story, you know, accompanied some Northmen on their adventures. He was sent there as a uh, um, diplomat sort of thing. But Antonio and Benares fucking nails in this movie. He never feels like fucking super action star in it at any point. When he's fighting, 
except in a couple points, he always feels like he's just slightly in over his head. Except for the first point when he realizes they're actually men and he just fucking just starts murdering motherfuckers. Yeah, 13th Warrior Cookie. Uh, but this yeah. movie's great. It's also one of the rare movies where you don't necessarily easily learn the names of characters and it doesn't fucking matter at all. You know, much like a a, a uh, Magnificent Seven movie or something story, you know a lot of them are going to die. They're all visually distinct. They don't all have to have personalities because it's not the point of it. It's telling a greater story than that. Um, basically, the Beowulf character and um, a couple others, the only ones you know. But the fucking the action is good. It's it's set right because it's supposed to be realistic, brutal, and you don't. It's not like this whole clean thrust parry everything. It's all fucking affrontic of stabbing and killing and murdering. That's the one that's based on Eaters of the Dead, right? Yes, yeah. It's great. I love it. It yeah. is a very good movie. I've seen it movie. once years ago and was not paying attention. Oh, it is worth a watch. I love it. Um, it's got some very positive messages because the Norsemen are very, very just fucking accepting of the, the era being in their midst. It's like, all right, cool, let's go. They tell some jokes at expense, but it's not like, you know, they're being mean. They're just being fucking like guys are. These are warriors who you know, fight to the death all the time. They're going to be a little little punchy like that. Uh, my friends are like that. They don't fight to death all the time either that I know of. But it's just super fun. And Tony Obed Harris and all the cast does their, their role well. And it just tells a good, interesting sort of retelling of, uh, of Beowulf. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it a half. Like, I don't it's really solid. think it's got any flaws. It's solid. Uh, soundtrack's good. Jerry Goldsmith does a good job on it. I thought about that after watching uh, uh, True Lies earlier. Mm. It's solid. It doesn't necessarily have a score you're going to recognize, but it's got the right beats in it. And, and it also the right has... tone and feel. Yeah. yeah. But also it has two great moments back-to-back before the final battle. The one where Antonio Banderas prays, saying that, you know, I planned, I started my life with plans of many things. This was not among them. But in this moment, all I want to do is live my next few moments well. And then to that, with Beowulf mortally wounded and, and coming out, and they're doing their the Viking prayer. Those are both great moments. And they did it back to back. It's fucking, it's great. Uh, nerd? So I watched a Tom Cruise movie, but it was not a good one. <laughs> There's not too many of those, so. Uh, so this was Universal's attempt at starting their own dark universe, which we started the with the barrel, very good. and then they followed up with the mummy. <laughs> I'm waiting for I did to be not somewhere even for finish the movie. I fell asleep. I was so bored. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> no, it's so bad. There's only one free, mummy you should watch. I'll watch it. Yeah. I mean. There's at least three mummy movies you should watch. There's the original, like yeah. original, original, then Brendan Fraser, then The Mummy Returns, Brendan Fraser. Correct. You can watch Tomb of the Dragon Emperor if you want. It's not as good as the other ones, but it's not I terrible. I forgot that one even Fraser. exists, to be honest. It's got Jet Li and Michelle Yeoh. It's really? Not, yeah. Huh. It's right. not terrible, it's just. Eh. What'd you. Eh. What, what rating do you give it? None. Well, that's a, what is she, our max? She gives is it a Z. Four? Multiple is it four Zs. Four or five is our max. Five is the max. Four and a half. Okay. <laughs> and I love the actress that played uh, the mummy. Uh, Sophia Botella. Sophia Botella. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she's she's very talented at some in a, at a lot of things, but she doesn't have a whole lot of range. I just need to know how uh, Russell Crowe is in it. Yeah. That, Cause I, that. Because I love Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe can take a movie that is not very good. And if he's on point for the movie, I'm not saying good. I'm saying on point for the movie. See uh, the, the Man with the Iron Fists. Like, he can <laughs> elevate a movie. I haven't thought about that movie in a hot minute. That movie's great. Russell Crowe fucking just takes that movie from like, Admit to like, oh fuck yeah, yeah. 
I, I, I haven't watched that since college. Oh God! All right, Godzo. There, there's, there's my, con- there's my Tom Cruise contribution for the week. <laughs> Where's your? Oh wait, wait, I didn't have one. Damn. Uh, I almost watched Night and Day instead of fucking Thirteenth uh, Warrior. Actually. So I finished <laughs> watching uh, Brother Sons. Uh, okay. The Brother Sons, which is a Netflix series about two brothers. One of them lives in America. One of them lives in Taiwan. The one who lives in Taiwan is a major gangster mafia feared by the entire area. And the one living in America doesn't even know that he's related to a mafia family and is a little chubby and is completely Americanized. Uh, Michelle Yeoh's character takes him to America to escape the mafia family. This show is fucking great. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. This is on Netflix? It's on Netflix. It's the brother's sons and son is S U N S. Um, and it's it's got great comedy, great action all the way through it. It is super good. I uh, can't wait for season two. Um, there was plenty of stuff to go around. Uh, great fighting in it. Um, they do a scene where they do uh, someone that's filmed by like a um, a quadcopter, a drone, and it's mm-hmm. done really really cool. Um, There's. It's switching up a lot more in movies. Drone work's getting a lot better in movies oh, yeah. and TV shows. Um, but I mean, it was great. I watched. It's only it's eight episodes, and they're about forty five to an hour long. But it was solid and good. I it's my recommendation of the week uh, to watch. Uh, really good comedy, uh, all in the right spots. I mean, you know, when the Americanized kid walks in, and goes, "Why are we cutting up a human body in our kitchen?" <laughs> and it's just all delivered just right. Because this kid has no fucking clue what his real life is supposed to be. Um, highly recommend it. I give it maybe one half to one because it's just good, solid martial arts um, and just highly entertaining. Um, and since y'all only had two, I'm going to go with this one. We'll finish with this. I went to the movie Well, theater. actually, I might have one. Oh. If, I can't remember if I've reviewed it yet or not. Okay, go ahead. Wait and I talked about Warrior. Uh, no, you have not now. No, because that's on Netflix. Now. Okay, so I finished the first season of Warrior. Uh huh. And and I love it. it oh is yeah. So fun to watch. It is so engaging. Like it, it's based on the writings of Bruce Lee. Of yep. Bruce Lee. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and just oh, I haven't watched like a good for me a good uh uh martial arts series or movie in probably since the it man trilogy oh yeah well, we're they're yeah. hoping that the that they're going to get another season with yeah, it on I netflix would, i uh, i would love to see more because i know that there's only i think what two three seasons three seasons three seasons on on max so I, yeah i, I want to see the main actor get more stuff oh yeah yes Yes, I don't know. I I was like looking him up. I was just like, what else has he been in? Because I bullet train. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the, the Snake Eyes movie. To... Don't don't watch the Snake no. Eyes movie. He bullet he should have been Snake the... Eyes. Instead, he played Storm Shadow. It was not as good. Yeah, yeah. No, Bullet Train was fantastic too. But uh, yeah. I I give it I give it half. I'm hoping it yeah. it gets renewed for one more so they can do like an ending to the series. Yeah, yeah. I, I need to catch up. I watched the first, most of the first season on uh, Max when I had access to that, and I need to finish first season and go into the second season. That the the Western episode. Oh yeah, was great. It was great. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just like oh, that's another one where the the also the score is really really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's just good. It's got some of the best martial arts action out there right now. All right, uh, All right. So f- I'll finish up. I went to the movie theater first time since COVID, and went oh, yeah. and saw Argyle. Um, been wanting to see Argyle. It looks like it's going to be a super fun movie. Um, it looks like it's and I love Sam Rockwell, especially as a spy, especially when we did <laughs> uh, Mister Wright, and he was amazing yes. in that. Uh, Sam Rockwell's great in this also. Um, Sam Rockwell. Yeah. yeah. No. No. No spoilers. Uh, there are some, the fuck are they doing in this show? What the hell? And you know that they must have been cracking this stuff up, so I'm not going to give any spoilers. But it's like, 
Yeah, I, I, I looked at my partner and was like, yeah, they just did that <laughs> type thing. Uh, it's and, Matthew Vaughn that did Kingsman and yes. Kick-Ass. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Same. Bullet, no, Bullet Train? No, no Bullet no. Train was uh, one of the guys from John Wick. David Like. Yes. Um, anyway. But I watched it. It wasn't bad, but it was interesting because the day before I watched Mission Impossible and all the scenes where they're crashing cars and do all that stuff and, you know, not CGI, completely all CGI in this. And I was like, man, can you tell? And you can tell bad. You know, yeah, all this so, stuff is CGI. Especially if you've just seen something that's like that. Yeah. You, you, you notice the lack of weight to the, to the scene, if you will. Yeah, and, it, like and an actual... it wasn't that it was bad. It was just that, man, I just got on watching Mission Impossible, and they had all these cool scenes that were real cars and real stuff going on, and then oh yeah, happened. and you're just like practical oh. effects versus special effects. There's a huge difference. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, story was okay. I knew what it was when I was going in. Um, nothing really shocked me. It had some good funny lines. Had some good action. Had some really stupid off the wall action scenes, but we're still like, holy shit. Did they? Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. They did that. But Sam Rockwell is amazing. I want to see him, uh, more. Uh, I think I like him pretty much everything. Yeah. Sure. I, I think they're going to do a, a Argyle two, Um, if they can't afford it. Um, I don't know how well, it's, how well it's doing in the box office, but, um, there is an after credit scene, um, that you have to stay for. And it's very shortly when the credits start. So you, you don't have to wait too long, uh, but it actually is a it's, a. it's actually I was like, oh shit, really? And you need to. I'm not going to spoil it for people. You can either look it up or you can wait till it comes out and you can watch it. Um, Seen it this week. Yeah. So. Um, I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. I give it like a one and a half to two because some of the the silly shit was like way out there, but it was still like you expected. That was my worry campy. that it was like going to be a. L- a little too much you know kingsman was about here it looked it might go a little bit above oh yeah Yeah. the cheese factor in this one is definitely it is definitely higher than the kingsman and cheese factor um but it was still entertaining i still had a good time watching it there was there's nothing wrong with it um if they make it two i'll probably go watch two so not a big deal hey nerd who do we need to go show and i guess give some love to tonight that's a good question. Let me see. Oh, uh, Ricky's not a ferret. Yeah, Ricky's doing a birthday stream. Uh, stream do we have Monster Den minis? Yeah, he's pretty high though. We always try to hit somebody that's got lower viewer. Okay, count. hold on. Do, 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 do. Ricky, on our list is Ricky's not a ferret. He's at twenty, so we'll give him the love tonight. Yeah. Give him the love tonight, guys. As always, we appreciate you coming on. We appreciate you listening. We appreciate you. We appreciate uh, Xander. Your quick question is: It Kingsman bloody? Uh, it's right around there, but not as. But it, it, it's near that. Um. But back to the thing. We appreciate everybody being on. We appreciate you listening. We appreciate you hanging out. Um, don't forget on Monday night, nerd is going to be doing some streaming and painting. Uh, she's got a plethora of models to paint anyway. That's a rough. Uh, my favorite word. And I will be on Wednesday word. night to do some painting. I've got the Highland coup. <laughs> I might be <laughs> on Thursday. Coup. We will see. John might be on Thursday. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, as always, please look after each other. Please look after each other very well. Now, if you see something, say something. If you can do something, do something. If you hear something, definitely say something so we can actually get taken out care of all this bullshit. Um, so we love you and we want to see you again. Um, for more than dice, I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm Nerd. Good night, people. Thanks for listening to More Than Dice, making the world a better, nerdier place, one dumb joke at a time. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast so you never miss a future episode. For more nerdy action or to connect with your hosts, check them out on Facebook.com slash more than dice and Twitch.tv slash more underscore than underscore dice. Until next time, stay nerdy, stay proud, and we'll see you soon on the More Than Dice podcast.